What I've got this morning is my wife has got some stuff back there. I've got all, I think she's got all the fathers that's in the house, names, and we got some stuff we're going to give away. Most of the time we try to take care of these mothers a whole lot better than what we do the dads, but, you know, there's a thing. But I am very proud this morning. I have all seven of my children in church with me this morning, my two daughter-in-laws, and all three grand puppies. Yeah, that was a thing. But I, like I said, I'm very proud this morning. Let her get all this stuff together and we will take care of this and I'll get out of the way. Do I? Do my daddy first. Okay. Okay. As usual, we never know what to get dad. Ever, ever, ever. So because we never know how what to get you. And that this is from a church. <clears throat> we got you a watch. We don't know if the kid tells time or not, but there's your watch. Okay? Like I said, I'm not sure if it tells time, but and here's you some music you can listen to on the way to church. I would tell you what side what songs is on here, but I can't see it. Okay? If Sister Wilma don't like it, she can break it. That's the thing. See, now I've taken care of him and been really, really nice. Oh, but he's going to draw me three names. Let's see whose name you draw. What we got down here, anyway? Two boxes, real and something else. I was going to be awful embarrassed if y'all draw Need some glasses? It says Eunice Walls. Who is that? Dennis Walls. Oh. <laughs> that must be you. <laughs> Go over here and find you something. <laughs> Don't that look like a you to you? That's all right. It says Guinea Moore. <laughs> Let me see who else we got here. We got all late, so I'll take something. <laughs> I don't know if a man behind you ever shakes or not. He might get it caught in his whiskers, but we're going to give it to him anyway. Brother Mitchell, get up here and get this razor. <laughs>
had a father. Amen. Amen. Ain't you glad that uh, throughout your lifetime, and uh, when you had problems and everything seemed to not go the way you wanted to go, that you had somebody that you was able to go back to, and uh, sometimes they didn't always tell you what you wanted to hear. Sometimes they even took a Board of Education to loosen your skin up so you could grow a little bit and you didn't like it. But you know, as we got older, we began to realize how important your family was in your life. Amen. How important God was in your life. How important that your father and your mother was. And how much did they mean to you. And you know, as, as time goes on, as you begin to realize as you get older in years and, and you begin to look back through and all of a sudden you wake up one day or one morning and you, you look in the mirror and you said, guess what? I become my dad. Yep. I become my mother. You say, oh, it don't happen. Yes, you see a lot of things that are familiar to what your parents were like because of how they raised you and what they told you to do and what it is. But you know, the most important thing of all things is that uh, whenever they teach you that you should be able to find your way to a house of worship and to find God and to worship God and do what God would have you do, that's the most important thing that they could ever have done for you. You know, they're going to give you all the things of this world. But you know, the things of this world shall soon pass away and it won't come back, you know, when you begin to look at that right You know, when you, everything you've got, whenever life is taken from your life, and you know, it's set there, there's nothing you can do. You don't even move. You're there. Somebody else has to take care of you. But you know, the thing about it is that God is able to reach down praise God, and find you whenever you were sinking deeply within sin. And then all you need to reach down, he touched your heart, he touched your soul, and he lifted you up, praise God. And he gave you something to live for, praise God, and something to look for. You know, when we sat here this morning, and I think about when Mickey said that there wasn't very many people in this congregation that your parents were there, or here today your father was. But you know, if your father lived like he needed to live for God, one of these days you're going to see him again, praise God. And you know, it's going to be a wonderful time when they can have a reunion up there. And all those that have gone before you, praise God, and those that you think, you know, I may never see them again. You know, but the thing about it is, death is only a step to eternal life, praise God. And as sure as we are born, we are going to step through that death door. And one of these days, we are going to arise again, praise God. And when we do, praise God, it's going to be a reunion like we have never seen before. And the power of God. Amen. You know, I thought about, you know, and this morning, if you get a look at it, you, you need to preach. I said, I don't have my Bible with me. I said, my Bible's at the house, and I, uh, 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 sometimes my plans is never like I want them, because I don't plan anything. I just play it by the ear, and just whatever I want to do, I just go do it, and, you know, that's what it is, and that's what happens when you get old and fat and retired. You know, and you have no hair, you can just do whatever you want to. You don't have to worry about a bad hair, do you? It's just as good tomorrow, because, you know, when my bad hair is, I spit and on my hand, and that took care of it, that's it, it's all that. It's out of place, I don't have to worry about it, you know. It's not a bad hair, do you know. If my wife says anything about a hair, do you know what I tell her? I said, you know, the only difference between a good haircut and a bad haircut is about two days when it grows out. So that might be no idea. I'm going to look the same. You might as well just enjoy and the things that God has given you to life in this world because, you know, there ain't, ain't going to change it. You know, look at this. Everybody's out to change something. I'm not going to change it. God made us like we are. You might as well accept what you are, and you might as well let everybody else accept who you are. Praise God. You know, when you're trying to change to somebody else to make them feel happy, all you do is make yourself miserable. Yeah. So you better just enjoy life because life is short. Amen. Amen. You know, when you think about it, oh, it's not. Yes, it is. Life is short. We have no promise of tomorrow. We don't know when you begin to look at this. We don't know if, if anything's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. You think, Brother Dennis, you know, when you can go to bed at night and never get up. But, you know, we are assured that he's coming back one day. Amen. Oh, you know, when I begin to look and think about it, you know, and we begin to wonder what is going to happen to thing, and begin to look at that there and try to understand, you know, the thing about it is God is superior to everything. Yes. Amen. You think, what do you mean? God is superior to everything. But one of these days, he's not going to be superior. Oh, everything got quiet. He's not going to be superior one of these days. He's going to be supreme. Amen. <laughs> he said, in the
the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. You think, brother, that's what you say right there. In the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. You think, Brother Dennis, and you know what he said right there? You begin to look at that right there? He made the superior things of this world. He created everything that we have. You know, when you begin to look at that, you think, what are you talking He created everything. You know, he made the perfect place for man. This is what he put the garden of Eden and everything you ever needed in there, he made for it. But you know what? Man destroyed what God made. He said, oh, what do you mean he destroyed? He destroyed it. You know what happened? How many times did it take? When you begin to look at this, how many times, how many years did he create before he ever let rain hit the world? He said, well, we can't sustain life without water. Everything just dries up and blows away. That wasn't God's plan. We made it that way. He said, what are you talking about? We made it that way. They didn't know what rain was until Noah came. Until the world became so wicked, he said, I gotta cleanse the world. Let's put it in my own word. I got to cleanse the world. And whatever he did, you know what? The first thing that he did right there when he began to come right there, he said, you know, if we can find anything, you know, he told Noah, what I want you to do is I want you to build me an ark. He said, what are you talking? I want you to build me an ark. The thing that I made, man has tried to destroy. And what he's done, they're doing a pretty good job of it. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start all over again. The Bible says, when you get a look there, he said it rained 40 days and 40 nights. And he flooded the whole earth to begin to take care of it. You think, Brother Dennis, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me read a little bit here first. In Genesis 1 and 1, he said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John 1 and 1. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Amen. You said, what are you talking about? I'm talking about superior over everything. You said, what are you talking about? Let's go to Revelation, the 19th chapter, 11th verse. You think, Brother Dennis, I know you're probably going to keep up with me, because I have a lot of scripture stuff here that just run through my mind and begin to think about what's it. And he said, and I saw heavens open. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in the righteousness he does judge and make war. And his eyes were as flames of fire, and those on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. Amen. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. You think, well, this what I just tell you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. When you begin to look at the New Testament, you begin to write, that's what you begin to write, who it was. In the Old Testament, he began to write when he created the heavens and the earth. In the book of Revelation, he said he was the Word. You think, well, that's pretty big to look at. You can do whatever you want to. You can think wherever you want to. Over the generations of time, there's something that hadn't changed, and that's been the Word of God. The way that we take it, we begin to look at it, we would try to interpret it to different people. We change our own philosophies in it. But the Word of God is the same. Right. And you know, when you begin to look at that, you begin to think, well, what it is? You know, when they hung him on a cross, what was the first thing that they put? They put a crown upon his head. You think, well, that's way They put a crown upon his head. Why did they put a crown upon his head? You ever thought about that? Why? Because he was a king. Even though they didn't do it, he was still a king. He died with a crown upon his head. You think, well, this right there. He was superior to everybody else. They put it on top of it. He's the king of kings and the lords of lords. You think, Brother Dennis, we begin to say, put on top of it. He was superior to everybody else. You know, he hung on the cross because he chose to hang up on the cross. You think, Brother Dennis, what you're talking about? I'm going to tell you what could have happened. He could have got off that cross any time yeah. that he wanted to. Praise God. You think, Brother Dennis, he couldn't? Yes, he could have. Praise God. You know, the thing about it was.
was, he had an army that was standing there and said, just turn me a loose, praise God. You think of this, what are you talking about? He had an army of angels that were sitting there that said, we have been called and commissioned into your army to fight for you, to die for you, whatever it needs to do, praise God. But the thing about it was, he said, no, you're going to wait, you got to hold back, you can't do it, you can't fight, you just stand there, praise God. And they had to see him there hang up on the cross and die because that was the plan of salvation that he made. Amen. You know what the plan of salvation was? I'm coming back again. Amen. I'm supreme. You know how I come? I know I'm supreme. When I begin to look at that right there, you know how I'm so much prepared than everybody else? Because I'm going to rise up out of that grave. Oh, you think well, that's what you're talking about? You ain't going to hold me here. Praise God. You know, there was a war that went on in heaven. Praise God. And you know, when you begin to think about that, and you begin to try to understand, the Bible tells us that there was a war that went on in heaven. And you think about it. And Lucifer was there, and you think, and he was cast out of heaven. And the thing about it is that when he left, he took the angels with him, praise God. And you begin to find out what it is. And he was cast down into the earth. And praise God, from that time forth, mankind has lived a miserable life. Yes. Amen. You said, no, they have Yeah, you will too. You know what you think? You think the devil ain't got power? You're crazy. Amen. You better wake up to reality. He's got all the power that you could ever think about. And you think, well, he's got more power than you do. He'll make you do things you don't want to do. But the thing about it, all of a sudden, when you yield unto the temptation and you begin to find what it is you do, things you re regret that you had ever done. But you know, there is a man that is more powerful than him. Amen. Yes. You think, brother, that's what you're talking about. There's a man that's more powerful than him. When you get a look at this and try to understand what I'm saying and what I'm trying to tell you here this morning, when you begin to look at this and try to understand what it is, you know, we looked upon the things of what it is. In the 14th verse in Revelation 19, he said, And the armies which are in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sword, a sharp sword.